Hey guys, welcome to the class. Uh, in the session, we are going to discuss about two statements. One is break statement and the next one is continue statement. So I'll just start with the break statement. Why we are going for this break statement or what is the uh, use of this break statement? And this break statement is generally called as a loop control statement. Why? Because it is used to terminate the execution of loops. Okay, so we know uh, there are three loops we have. One is for loop, while loop and do while loop. So we can use this break statement inside these three loops. Along with that, we can also use this break statement inside switch statements. So whenever a break statement is encountered by the uh, compiler, then it will automatically terminate the execution of that particular loop. Okay, so it will not terminate the entire program, but it will just terminate the execution of the loop alone. That is why it is called as a loop control statement. And whenever it terminates the execution of loop, then the program control will return to the first statement that is present after the loop. Okay, so outside the loop, the first statement is there, right? So uh, when the loop gets terminated, then the program control moves to that statement only. That is the statement that is present outside that loop and when it is used inside the switch statement it will terminate the processing of particular case okay so we already have discussed these switch statements and in that we have also seen what is the use of break how it is used in all the cases okay so whenever a break is used in a case then that particular case will get terminated okay so it will just come out of that Switch, switch state switch cases so that is what the use of break inside this switch statement and the syntax for break is just it is very simple we have to use the keyword break along with the semicolon right so this is how a break statement should be used and here is an example for break statement that will tell you how this break statement will terminate the loop okay again i'm saying the break statement can be used only within do uh, sorry do while while for loop and switch statements so apart from these we cannot use break statements in other part of the program also this is used to terminate only the loop okay it will not terminate the remaining part of the program it will terminate only that particular loop where it is uh, present or uh, uh, in which it is present and coming to this example so starting with the main function, inside main function, we have an initialization statement where i is initialized with value 0. Okay, so now we have a while loop inside this main function. So in while loop, we are going to check whether i value is less than 10. So if the value of i is less than 10, then this while loop will get executed. The block of statements inside this loop will get executed. If it is false, then it will not execute this loop. Uh, I, I, it means it will execute the remaining part of the program outside the loop if it is false. Okay, so starting with i value that is 0. So 0 is less than 10. Now the condition is true. If the condition is true, then it will enter this while loop. So inside this, the first statement we have is increment of i. So now the value of i becomes 1. After the value of i becomes 1, now it is again going to check if i is equal to equal to 5 that is 1 is equal to equal to 5 so if the value of i is 5 that is if it, the condition is true then it will execute this break statement if the condition is false then what happens it will not execute this break statement the next part of the program will get executed that is this printf statement will get executed okay so this will repeatedly happen until the value of i becomes 10 okay so you uh, up to value i i mean up to the value of i is 9 the condition will get satisfied here then the loop will get executed when the i value becomes 10 so here the loop will not get executed because here the condition becomes false right so now what happens in this printf statement we, have, we are going to just print the value of i. Now the value of i is 1. So what will happen? Here output will be displayed as 1. Initially it will be 1. Then completing the statement, again the control moves to this while statement. Now it will check whether 1 is less than 10 because i value is incremented to 1 here. 
So now the condition is 1 is less than 10, which is true again. If it is true, it enters into the loop. Now the value of i becomes 2, right? Then in if condition, it will check whether 2 is equal to equal to 5. No, it is false. If it is false, it will print the value of i, which, which is 2. Again, the value of i that is 2 is less than 10. So this is what the condition is. It is also 2, true. And after that, the value of i becomes 3. Then it will check whether 3 is equal to equal to 5. If it is not true, then it will execute print of statement. And now the value of i becomes 3. That is, it will print the value of i as 3. Then again, it moves to this while loop. Now 3 is compared with value 10. So here the condition is true. If it is true, it enters into the loop. Now the i value becomes 4. So then we are checking whether 4 is equal to equal to 5. No, it is false. If it is false, it executes this printf statement which will print the output 4. Then moving to while condition, 4 is less than 10. It is true. After it becomes true, the i value gets incremented to 5. Now i is 5. Then coming to if condition, it will check whether 5 is equal to equal to 5. So now the condition is true because i value is 5 and it is equal to 5. If the condition is true, what happens? It will execute the break statement. So if this break statement is encountered or if it is executed, what happens? This break statement will terminate the entire loop. So what is the loop here? While is a loop. So if this break statement is encountered, it will ex it will terminate this entire while loop. It will not execute anything inside the while loop. Then what happens? So it will just come out of this while loop. Right? So up to 4, value 4 will be printed as output here. This is what the use of break statement here. Right? Then the next statement is, Continue statement. So this continue statement is uh, is also similar like break statement. That is, it is called as a loop control statement. But the difference is break statement will terminate the loop when it is uh, when the control goes to break statement. Then it will terminate the loop. But coming to continue statement, so continue statement will not terminate the loop, but it forces the next iteration of the loop to execute. That is. It will temporarily stop the uh, iteration of the loop and it will proceed to the next iteration of the loop. Okay, so it will not terminate the loop entirely, completely. But it will just force the next iteration of the loop to execute. And that is why it is called as the loop control statement. And uh, when we are using this continue statement, so it just end the current iteration of the loop then it will proceed to the next iteration of the loop. And this continuous statement can be used within do, for and while. So only we can use this continuous statement inside the loop like do, for and while and we cannot use continue in um, uh, the, the, I mean switch statement. Like break statement we cannot use continue in switch. Okay, so it can be used only within this do, for and while statement. And the syntax for continue is just simple like the break statement. So here we have to use the keyword continue along with the semicolon and coming to the example. So if you see the example here starting from main function and here I have used for loop. Okay, I have taken for loop and in this for loop I am initializing the value uh, of variable i as 1. Then the condition to be checked is value of i should be less than or equal to 5. So until the value of i becomes 6, this loop will get executed continuously. That is uh, totally it will uh, execute for 5 number of times. I mean 5 times. Okay. Then we have used uh, update statement that is increment operator here. So it will get executed for 5 times. Then inside this for loop, we have if condition. And what this if condition is doing? It is checking whether i modulo 2 is equal to equal to 1. So here, this condition is nothing but we are going to check whether the value that is uh, the uh, i value is e odd number. Okay, here we are checking whether the value of i is odd number because we are dividing the value of i by 2. Then this modulo will produce us the remainder as the result. If the remainder is 1, we know that it is an odd number. So when this 1 is equal to equal to 1, which means we are going to find only the odd numbers here. 
from the value of i. So if it is true, what happens? It will print continue. That mean, it means it, it will execute continue. So when it executes continue, then the uh, remaining part of the while loop will not get executed here. When a continue statement is encountered by the compiler, then what happens? So the remaining statements inside this loop will not get executed. So what happens directly the control moves to the for loop again. So then the for loop will start its next iteration. Okay, so again it will check for the condition. If it is true, again it moves to continue. But if it is false, then what happens? It will execute the statement, this printf statement. Right? So this is what happening in this program. And now we will try to solve this and we will try to find the output for this program. So starting from this for loop, here we have initialized the value of i as 1. So now we have value of i as 1. It will check for condition 1 is less than or equal to 5. It is true. If it is true, it enters into this block and it will check for the condition here. 1 modulo 2 is equal to equal to 1. That is if we divide 1 by 2. So the remainder we will get here is 1. So 1 is equal to equal to 1. The condition is true. If the condition is true, it will execute this continue statement. And when continue statement is executed, the remaining part of the for loop will not get executed, right? So now what happens? The control moves to for loop again. And when the control moves to for loop again, so now the value of i gets incremented because we initialized and we checked for condition, then we executed. After executing the for loop, the next uh, thing that a for loop will do is it will go for this upgrade statement. So the value of i gets incremented to 2. Right. Now, it will check for the condition. After increment, it will check for the condition whether 2 is less than or equal to 5. It is true. So, if it is true, it enters here. Now, it will check whether 2 modulo 2 is equal to equal to 1. So, 2 divided by 2, the remainder is 0. And if it is 0, here the condition is not satisfied. So, it is false. If it is false, then it will execute this printf statement. And what you are going to print in the printf statement? We are going to print the value of i. Right. So now what is the value of i? Value of i becomes 2 now. So this value will get printed as output. So first it will print the output 2. And after this again the control moves here. Now the value of i becomes 3. That is it will get incremented to 3. Then 3 is compared with 5. Now the condition is true. Then it will come to this loop. Now it checks for the if condition. So 3 divided by 2 the remainder is 1 so 1 is equal to equal to 1 it is true if it is true it comes to continue statement so when continue statement is there then this statement will get will not get executed now the control moves here now the value of i becomes 4 right so it will check for condition 4 is less than or equal to 5 true so it will come to this if statement it will Check 4 divided by 2. So what is the value of 4 divided by 2? That is the remainder is 0 here. So 0 is equal to equal to 1? No. If it is false, it will print the value of i. Now the value of i is 4. So which is printed as output here. And then again, the control moves to this i++. plus plus. Now i++ plus plus means the value of i becomes 5. It will check 5 is less than or equal to 5. Yes, it is true. Then it goes for this if 5 modulo 2. So that is the remainder is 1. So 1 is equal to equal to 1. It becomes true. If it is true, it moves to this continue statement. So again the control moves to this for loop. Now i value gets incremented to 6. It will check for the condition whether 6 is less than or equal to 5. No, it is false. If it is false, the entire loop will not get executed. Right? So what is the output we obtained in this program? 2 and 4. This is how a continue works. Okay, so this continue is used within this for loop and when this statement is, uh, uh, I mean executed, then the remaining statements of for loop will not get executed, but the iteration continues. It will move to the next iteration. Okay, it will not terminate the entire loop. Instead, it will just end the current iteration of the loop and it will proceed the sec next iteration. This is all about the continue statement and break statement.